Hi everyone. I am here with your Bible study. Our Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good evening. Alright guys, tonight we are in the book of John, John chapter 6. I let you know last night in case any of you wanted to get a head start and read it, study it. Okay, the um, devotion tonight is by... Put your foot on it. The um, Bible study tonight is by Sharon Hennick. Sorry. And it's fine. And the verse that goes along with her devotion is John 6, verse 35. And it says, Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Okay, so now let's go and I'll read to you guys John chapter 6 out of the Bible. That's Job. I always keep the bookmarker on Job. And I'm telling anybody, if, I always tell everybody if they're having a bad time in their life, they're going through a lot, read the book of Job. That's the book in the Bible you need to read. It's a little long, but read the book of Job. It's worth it, especially when you're having a bad, like I said, a bad time. Okay, in uh, John chapter 6, we'll be reading about Jesus feeds the 5,000. Jesus walks on water. Jesus, the bread of life, and many disciples desert Jesus. Okay, so let's begin. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. See how it says this? Many people followed Jesus because of the signs they seen him do. That's the same way it's going to be in the end times. People coming back saying they're Jesus, and they'll be able to perform miracles. And a lot of people will fall for it and follow them. But remember, I've told you. Jesus has told you. God has told you. Read it in the Bible. I'm reading it for you guys. You'll know when Jesus comes back. We'll all know at the same time. Because there will be no doubt. You'll see him coming from heaven. So don't fall for that. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. You know, did they forget about Jesus feeding the 4,000? Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. That's not including women and children as well. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were seated as much as they wanted he did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, they were all full. He said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself, which Jesus so often did, went off by himself to pray. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. 
When they had rowed three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water. And they were terrified. They thought he was a ghost. But he said to them, It is I. Don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat. And immediately, immediately, as soon as Jesus entered the boat, it reached the shore where they were heading. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but that they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent, to believe in Jesus. So they asked him, What miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? Like they, they always want a sign. Just like, uh, didn't they get a sign when Jesus fed all of them in the desert there? 5,000 of them? Must not have been a miracle enough. What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives his life to the world, Jesus. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will drive away. I will never drive away. I'm sorry. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me of God. And this is the will of him who sent me that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. At this, the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. I tell you the truth. He who believes has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which they're taking literally, 
which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? You imagine they was probably pretty disgusted at that, saying it like that. But Jesus didn't mean flesh <laughs> like his skin flesh. But they didn't get it. Okay. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, bread and wine, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my body is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so that no one who feeds on me will ever Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? What if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? Which they did. They did. After Jesus came back from the dead, after 40 days when he went back to heaven, they seen him ascend to heaven. <laughs> he was being serious then. This is, what, this is exactly what he meant. What if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe, and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. But the twelve he picked were still there. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. When Jesus replied, Have I not chosen you the twelve? Yet one of you is the devil. He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, who, though one of the twelve, was later to betray him. It always says um, Judas Iscariot, or Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, because there was two Judases that were in Jesus' twelve disciples. Judas Iscariot is the one who betrayed him. Jesus knew who, was, who it was going to be, and that it was going to happen before he even, you know, picked out his disciples. He already knew. <clears throat> That's why, can you imagine how much stress he had to have on him? Knowing what all he was going to go through. But he did it anyway. For us. He suffered for us. For you and for me. For Sherm. For all of us. And some people... That's still not good enough. They either don't believe in him or they think it's a joke and would rather be on the devil's side. And sad. Very sad, guys. Those are lost souls. Just like the fallen angels. They'll be cast to hell, too. All right. And Sharon Hennick's devotion. Let's see what Sharon has to say tonight. She says, Mid-afternoon. I was working at my desk and getting increasingly frustrated. Tension squeezed my skull, and I couldn't solve the simplest problems with the manuscript I was working on. 
I walked out to the kitchen to get a cup of tea, hoping that a fresh perspective would help. While the water heated, I ran my hand over the clean countertop. No crumbs, no dishes in the sink, no signs of anyone having eaten a recent meal. That's when it hit me. I'd forgotten to have lunch. No wonder I felt cranky. My husband shakes his head, bewildered, whenever I tell him I've forgotten to eat. Apparently his stomach does a better job of reminding him when he needs to refuel. I've had to endure some good-natured teasing about being so absent-minded that I forget to eat. There are even more serious consequences if I forget to seek nourishment for my soul. If, the if in the big eternal picture, Jesus is our bread of life, his body broken for us gives us everlasting life. But in our day-to-day -day activities, he also is our nourishment our sustenance, our source of life. When I don't include him in my thoughts throughout the day, it's like ignoring my body's need for food. Soon I'm grumpy, weak, and empty without realizing what's going wrong. Time in his word, a worship song, or a few minutes of prayer can restore my spiritual strength as my hungry heart feasts on love and truth. Amen, Sharon. Okay, and your homework for tonight is, next time you eat something, thank Jesus for nourishing your spirit with his presence along with the meal. Take time to receive food for your soul. Amen. We all need that and we could all, all benefit from a little more. It's not like you can have too much faith or too much Jesus. Okay, guys, so that was our Bible study for tonight. I hope it touched your hearts. Our next Bible study will be in 2 Corinthians, so I will go get that set up right now. Um, please keep Sherman Crabtree in your prayers. He's still really sick. Strep throat, fever, cough, all that. Please keep uh, Layla in your prayers. She's having a lot of health issues right now. And please keep our nephew Jimmy Myers in your prayers. His headaches are not getting any better. And that he can't get into the neurosurgeon until January 11th, I believe. So please keep him in your prayers. He needs a lot of prayers. And um, the way that malformation and stuff, the way it is with his spine, the doctor told him he could, you know, be paralyzed any time. And it wasn't his idea, but they're wanting to take him to the chiropractor to have his neck adjusted and stuff. Not the doctor's request, just somebody else's. And I don't think that's a good idea, especially where he told me, you know, that he could be paralyzed because of his spine, that thing being so close or whatever. They go jerking around on his spine. That could paralyze him or kill him. Somebody we know that had uh, her neck adjusted. Everybody's different, but she had her neck adjusted, and it caused her to have several strokes, and they said that's what it was from. The doctor did from having her neck adjusted. So um, please keep him in your prayers. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible study. Good night, guys. Gotta find 2 Corinthians chapter 4.